This is example number six of section 13.4. So we have a block A in a system of pulleys. We have three pulleys, right? And a, the block A weights, let's see, the weight of A is 20 pounds. And we are pulling uh, the core at point B with a force of 10 pounds. And we are asked to find the time needed to pull the core at B, right, down four feet. So we know that this is going to be four feet down. Uh, front rest uh, when 10 pounds is applied. So our solution. So if we apply a force in B, we see that the whole system of pull is going to be affected. So pulley C is going to go up, and pulley A is going to be up too. So we, the first thing we need to do in order to be able to apply our equations of equilibrium, because the only mass that we have is A. So the equations will be uh, applied to where our mass is. So for example, in, in this pulley, let's call this pulley, pulley 1, pulley 2, and pulley 3. So if we apply our equations in pulley 3, then we need to f know if we move these four feet, how much is this going to move up? So the first things we have to do is find the kinematic relation between the pulleys. So what I'm going to do is put a reference frame or datum, and I'm going to call this distance that is going to increase four feet, but I'm going to call it, or a general a variable, SB. I'm going to call this distance C, and I'm going to call this distance A. And we see that we don't have only one chord in the problem, but we have two chords. We have this chord right here that ends right there. Let's call that L1. And then we have another chord that starts right here and goes all the way to there. So I'm, I'm going to call this L2 for my relation. So I'm going to find the kinematic relations of pulley system. And I see that to relate that to distance, I'm going to relate SA, SB, SC with L1, which is the total length of that chord. And I see that I have 1 SB, SB plus 2 SC is equals to the total length of L1. And then I see that I have S a plus, I need this distance right here. This distance right here, it will be SA minus SC. So it will be SA minus SC. And that is going to be L2. From here, I can derive both sides of the equation. When I derive with time, I can see that the derivative of this Part of the equation gives me the velocity, uh, velocity b plus 2 velocity c, and the derivative of a constant gives me equals to 0. And from here, I see that this gives me va plus va gives me 2va minus vc, and the derivative of the other side of the equation gives me equals to 0. So from here, I already have the two relations that I says Velocity of B is equal to minus velocity of C. And here I get that 2 velocity of A is equal to, in the same direction, velocity of C. And from those two equations, and I actually can find a third relation that relates velocity of A and velocity of B. And that would be, if I plug in here a velocity of C, Right here, I can get that velocity of B is equal to minus 2 to velocity of A. So my third relation will be velocity of B is equal to minus 
four velocity of E. So those are my three kinematic relations of the pulley. The next thing that I'm going to do is draw the free body diagrams of my pulleys. So the free body diagram, free body diagram of pulley three, right? That will give me two tensions. Since I, since I call this a chord L2, let me call that tension two. And those two tensions, we know if that pulleys are frictionless, those two tensions are equal. So the tension in this core is equal to the tension of the core. So that's why I call them the same. And here, what this pulley feels is the weight of A. So that's 20 pounds. So from here, we can get, so if we add forces in Y, we can get that 2 T2 minus 20 pounds will be equals to the acceleration of a, a, the pulley or the mass, the velocity of A. We already found our kinematic relations, and we see that when I pull down court, uh, point B, I am, it's a negative value, so my pulley goes up. So that will have a positive acceleration of A. So my equation says that this is the mass A times that acceleration of A. So here, let me uh, write that down with the mass. You know that 20 pounds is the weight. You know that weight, weight is equal to mass than um, gravity. So if we want to put our mass here, we have to divide that weight over our gravity. You remember how much is the gravity in American units? It's 32.2 feet over second square, right? So we have to put here 20 over 32.2, that's our mass, A. And here we, uh, we like to, to find time, right? To find time, we have to integrate the acceleration. So we have to find that acceleration, but we still have this T2 as an unknown. So to find that T2, I'm going to do the free body diagram of pulley, pulley 2, which is my pulley C. So to relate those two tensions to that tension. So when I do the free body diagram of that pulley, pulley C, which is the pulley 2, right? I have tension 1 of my core 1 tension 1, and I have here tension 2. So I see here that tension 2 tension 1 minus 1 tension 2 is equal to mass of that pulley C acceleration of C. However, we know that this we, we can neglect the uh, mass of the pulleys compared to the mass of block A. The problem, the questions of the problem said that please neglect the mass of the pulleys. So if we know that this is zero or almost zero, we know that 2t1 equals 2t2. And how much is t1? t1, since it's a whole one only one chord, and this one chord has uh, no friction in the pulley, so this tension all along all this cord is the same. If I'm pulling here with 10 pounds, all the tension in this cord is 10 pounds. So this T1 is equal to 10 pounds. So we here can say that T2 is actually 20 pounds. Once we have T2, then we can calculate our acceleration. So let's name this equation equation 1. Let's name this equation 2. And then with equation 1 and equation 2. So we have 2t2 
52, which is 20, minus 20 equals to 20 over 32.2 acceleration in A. So here I get the acceleration in A is equals to what we see here. We got 20, 20. So it's 32 feet over second square. So this is our acceleration. But we, that's not the answer yet because we were asked to find time. What do we do now? Since acceleration in B is constant, can integrate that acceleration and relate it to the distance. But we don't want to relate that distance to acceleration A. We have to find acceleration B. But here we have the equation that the velocity is equal to minus 4 times for a velocity of A. So we can derive that equation and find that acceleration B is minus 4 times acceleration of A. So that's 4 times 32.2. That's equals to 128 feet per second squared. And finally, we can say that integrating, we find that the distance B is equal to the initial distance in B plus the initial velocity B plus the acceleration in B times square over 2. We know that it start from rest, so we can say that this is 0. We can say that this is 0. We have 4 feet over here, and we have our acceleration which is 128.4, actually, point eight. Point 0.8 times square over 2. And from here, we find time. And the time solving, obviously, you have to multiply by 2 for it and divide by, by 128.8 and get the square root. And I already calculated that, 0.2496. And that's the answer we were looking for. Just to, since we had several steps, let me review it for you. So what did we do in this problem? First of all, any time that we, find we have a system of pulleys, the first thing that you have to do is find the relations between the uh, velocities and therefore the accelerations between the, the, the cords and the pulleys and the move, 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 movement. So the first thing that we did was the kinematic relation. The second thing was doing the free body diagrams of uh, uh, the pulleys. And I did not draw the kinematic diagram because, well, it didn't have much space. But here, I draw the free body diagram and the acceleration. So this is my kinetic diagram of that pulley. And I make it equal, the free body diagrams of external forces to my kinetic forces. Pulley C doesn't have any acceleration. Well, it does have an acceleration, but it doesn't have any mass. So it doesn't have any kinetic forces. So here we have mass times acceleration. So we have a kinetic force here. We don't have any kinetic force here. And at the end, we found the uh, integrating the acceleration. We were able to find the relation between the distance and time and acceleration.